to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Amen. Please help me honor Dr. Mosfenwan, his wife again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Truly, it truly is an honor. And then I also celebrate everyone who has come to celebrate with this great ministry. I love Pastor Emos Fenwa sincerely and um, the times that we have to share just talking, they are, they are usually um, wonderful moments where, you know, sometimes I get to hear him speak and communicate the wisdom and the counsel of God. And I do not take it for granted, sir. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Hallelujah Father help us Bless our hearts let there be proof that we met you this morning let the sick be healed O god let the oppressed be delivered turn someone's life around let this service be a feast of fat things and we vow to give you the glory in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you hallelujah we started in the first service discussing james 1 verse 17 please do well to get the teaching the bible says every good gift and every perfect gift james 1 and verse 17 tells us that it comes from above and comes down from the father so i took out time in the first service to teach on the fatherhood of god the consciousness of the fatherhood of God takes away fear from our lives, takes away doubt as to whether it is God's desire to lift us, it is God's desire to bless us, it is God's desire to advance us. The consciousness of the fatherhood of God gives you confidence. Hallelujah. And I did say that the word Abba means source, it means sustainer and it also means defender that if god is your source if god is your sustainer if he's your defender then you do not need to fear and i charged us to approach god beyond the realm of superstition and religion that more than being the creator of the ends of the earth more than being a miracle worker more than being the god of the universe he desires to be known by the saints and his children as Abba and that the hallmark of fatherhood is not having children is not procreation is the responsibility that is expressed through benevolence the ease to give the ease to release is God's idea of fatherhood if ye being evil know how to give good gifts so a true father is a giver not just a procreator a giver 
according to scripture you do not need to have physical children to be called abba the moment you have it in your heart that you are a giver you are father and that our father in heaven is not just a receiver but he's a giver i think let me just stress that before we go uh, into the next aspect of this teaching for most people and i think sadly religious people have made it that way our idea of god is just that he's a receiver receiving money receiving service receiving our time and threatening us that if we do not give these things there are consequences that follow us so largely out of fear or a sense of guilt people continue to engage in spiritual activities but the revelation is not the awareness of his fatherhood the revelation is fear of some sort the bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive and so if it is true that god is a father it means that no one should outgive him he should be the giver of all good things and we prayed and obtained grace from the lord hallelujah the next revelation very quickly for this service and then we'll pray the next revelation that governs the manifestation of good things the manifestation of the goodness by the way let me say this the goodness of god is a dimension of his glory remember when he told moses said to see his glory he made a request that i may see your glory and the reply that came from god was that i will let my goodness i will cover you and i will give you an opportunity to see my goodness so the goodness of god is an aspect of his glory and you have not really experienced the fullness of god's glory if all you have seen is his light you've fallen down and, and stood up and all of that if that's all you have seen you've not seen the fullness of god there is a dimension of god's glory that must be revealed as his goodness in fact here's what the bible says oh taste and see not just that the lord is powerful you can taste and see that the lord is good jesus you are so good to me in all circumstances in all circumstances oh jesus you are so good to me hallelujah the goodness of god revealed in the life of the saints the quality of benevolence the quality of bringing joy to the saints bringing joy to the children of god by making sure did you know look at me you do not need things to happen in your life to be joyful you can be joyful even in the midst of the storms count it all joy my brethren he said when you face diverse temptations however you need things to be given to you so that your joy will be complete he says he that told you have not asked for anything jesus said he said ask and you will receive that your joy may be full you cannot have the fullness of joy until you taste of the goodness of god it is true that you can have joy in the midst of storms it is true that you can have joy in the midst of nothing but you can never experience the fullness of joy until that dimension of god called his goodness is revealed in your life turn it into a prayer in one minute lord show me your goodness in the land of the living show me your goodness show me your goodness give me a revelation of your goodness show me your goodness is someone praying remember it is those who ask that receive lord i remain joyful in the midst of my situations and circumstances however i need the fullness of joy in this season the fullness of joy in this season 
dependable dependable god are you praying it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still god intentional say intentional intentional god yes the part i want you to prophesy into your life that everything is working out for my good dependable god one more time dependable dependable god it doesn't matter what comes my way you are still god intentional intentional god everything is working out for my good you are good you are good, Jesus. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good, Jesus. You are good, Jesus. You are so good to me. He knows the consequences. Oh, you are so good to me. He knows the consequences. He knows the consequences. Oh, Hallelujah! Please be seated. Oh, taste and see that the lord is good when doors begin to open in your life in a way that you cannot explain that is the goodness of god revealed to you when god begins to honor your children and use them as a trophy upon your head that is the goodness of god when god begins to turn your captivity ah let me speak to someone in the name that is above all names i stand by the grace of the living god and i declare to you that that which stands like a mountain in the name of jesus whose i am and whom i serve may that mountain be lifted from off your life lifted from off your destiny in the name of jesus christ listen God is a good God. You have to expect the goodness of God to speak in your life. If you do not expect it, it will never happen. I expect the goodness of God on my job. I expect the goodness of God. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous. Expectation is more than a wish. I expect the favor of God revealed in my life. I expect the wonder working power of God. I expect that when I get to the office, someone under the influence of my father's hand will be compelled to bless me. Did you know, while I sat back there and Pastor Mosfema was presenting the award to um you know the the management the traffic management i sat and i was blessed i said i wish many people can discern that this is the revelation this is goodness i saw the man smile nobody frowns at a gift nobody frowns at the you know god is good by the laughter that comes from your mouth genuine sincere laughter Herein is my father glorified, the Bible says, when ye bear much fruit. The goodness of God. Did you know it is even the goodness of God that leads men to repentance? The goodness of God is that powerful. When Peter in John 21, Peter attempted catching fish. He had been frustrated. Jesus had died. They were not sure he had come back to life. And he, he said, I go out fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing. This man scammed me for three and a half years of my life. I left my profession to follow him in hope that I will have a more meaningful life. Now he's killed. I'm in trouble. I go out fishing. And the remaining disciples say, we go with you. 
and they toiled and toiled and could not catch any fish here comes jesus the revelation of the father's goodness when he came he said little children have you any catch he said no he said cast your net to the right side as soon as they casted their net the bible says the net was about to break because of the fish it was the goodness of god peter recognized there is no one else who can do this except jesus he said i'm a sinner go away from me the goodness of god can bring judgment even to unbelievers because you see people in the dark world they know what to do they know the labor that they go through to get the slightest result they know the graves they have to lie down upon they know the covenants some of them give their children to get peace some of them give their joy some of them give parts of their body so when they see you rejoicing they wonder for this level of result what is it that you would have done and you tell them it's the goodness of god the goodness of god You are so good to me. You are so good. We'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Get tired of your current level. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I expect to see and experience the goodness of God every day of my life turn it into a prayer i expect someone pray you will marvel and wonder at what god does in your life as a result of this please pray please pray oh yes i expect you are a man of god i expect good news news of salvation transformation ever increasing glory the glory that excels in career i like you to declare this week cannot be like last week i expect good things good news hallelujah look up please the bible talks about a man who was crippled at gate beautiful and that every time the apostles alongside others would go to pray and the man would just sit there watching and then one time he made up his mind that he was tired of that situation and while he saw uh, the apostles on their way at the hour of prayer the bible says that he was begging for arms are we together now and peter and john looked at him and he said look at us and the bible says he looked expecting to receive expecting i expect favor i expect great people to talk about me i expect my name to be mentioned to the ears of my destiny helpers it's an expectation i expect that nothing good about my life will be hidden I expect visibility for my products. You are a businessman. Don't sit down there and be quiet and hope that things will happen. I expect visibility. I'm in ministry. I expect visibility from the realm of the spirit and in the physical. That no one will ignore my products and my services. I expect it because there is an anointing upon me. Expectation is powerful. I expect to be lifted. I expect to be blessed I expect to be honored I expect to be a sign and a wonder I expect my hands to be full I expect favor to work for me I live in this realm of expectation ever expectant God today is Sunday Abba 
what wonder do you have for me today i am ready to receive i am a receiver only because you are a giver if you are not a giver i have no business receiving for a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above listen look at me every time most times let me use politicians as an example when they go to their constituencies the moment people see them they expect that that politician would not leave that place without some act of charity or benevolence is that true and that expectation compels that politician prepared or not to at least drop something not necessarily because he likes the people but for his namesake have you seen people who play music during weddings i mean this is lagos so you know that right they come around you you are minding your business about to enter your car and go and they play music and dance around and call your name call your son name say something about you and your driver says sir don't leave these people like this expectation so when i sing about his praises and his goodness i'm not just worshiping him it's also a declaration of expectation god you can't keep quiet on me after rolling on the ground like this no i have called you a good god and i didn't call it in silence i said it before the world i've put pressure on your integrity to deliver you are so good to me now they are hearing you are so good to me so they say where is it you are as so i keep singing that song yes. i'm putting pressure on his integrity where is the goodness of god in your life and god says no 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 you can't keep calling that attribute of me and i live your life in shame you are so good to me sing it as a prophecy you are so good to me jesus you are so good to me in all circumstances in all circumstances jesus you are so good to me Unchangeable, unchangeable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional, say, intentional, intentional God. Everything is working out for my good. You are good. You are Jesus, you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. Jesus, you are good. Jesus, you are so good to me. sit down very quickly let's deal with the second principle and we'll pray no your life will change in the name of Jesus Christ you are in a season where you are about to see a display of God's goodness in a way that will marvel you I want you to believe it this is a prophetic church believe it believe it that for someone you will walk out of this service and you're on your way going home suddenly a call comes and you say well i mean i have not expected this and you pick that call and it's like opening a door to a realm where you will never return to your yesterday again remember the goodness of god do not forget this the goodness of god is powerful it can turn your morning to dancing in one day god can give you laughter that does not end
that you can step into prepared blessings listen there are times that God will send rain on your farm and then after four months you will yield a harvest huh but there are times God can send bread from heaven directly processed already it's called prepared blessings he is still the doer of all whether he sends rain to your farm or gives you manna directly it is still God and he can send both the rain and manna because there are times the urgency in your life does not allow the, the time before the plants will grow you need manna directly from heaven let this revelation sink in your spirit it says surely goodness is it in your bible they are not attributes they are spirits surely goodness and mercy surely goodness following me on my way to the marketplace goodness mercy in school goodness mercy Let me give us one more point and then we'll pray. Is God blessing us? Isaiah chapter 1, please, from verse 19. The second key that controls the manifestation of the goodness and the hand of God upon our lives. Remember, the first is the revelation of the fatherhood of God. Then I spoke a bit about expectation now. Isaiah chapter 1, please, from verse 19. Please give it to us. Isaiah 1 from verse 19 and 20 read with me please if you're a christian is projected ready read if ye be willing uh-huh and obedient what will happen if you are unwilling and disobedient what happens to you the goodness of the land will never come to you the first revelation from this scripture is that there is goodness not only in god there is goodness in every land that you are not experiencing it does not mean it is not there. Please listen. Every land, no matter how barren, there is an investment of God's goodness on it. Lagos is a good land. Every territory where you reside is a good land. But there is a condition for that earth to yield its increase to you. Is that true? If you are willing and you are obedient obedience is a very powerful spiritual principle in fact according to scripture faith is not complete until there is obedience faith is not just believing god faith is not just saying what you want faith is not even just saying what god has said faith is obtaining the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that guarantee the results that God said should come. It's not enough to expect increase. It's not enough to expect good things. Every promise in scripture is conditional. The only thing in scripture that is not conditional is the love of God. But every other reality, every possibility in the kingdom is highly conditional deuteronomy chapter 28 please give us from verse 1 and 2 i like us to read it together deuteronomy chapter 28 when it's projected and we can see it let's read together deuteronomy 28 1 and 2 ready please let's read and it shall come to pass aha uh -huh, if thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do take notes to observe and to do all which i command you this day aha uh -huh, that the lord thy god will set thee on high above verse 2 and all these blessings how many blessings how many blessings and all these blessings shall what it comes on you because it comes from above and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Say obedience. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. 
when Moses died and the mandate was now transferred to Joshua he was afraid because the people were a stiff-necked people they were stubborn people how would he lead such people and a revelation was given to him Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 it says this is the formula Joshua for your success this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth please pay attention God is about to bless someone it says but thou shall meditate therein day and night don't stop there. We stop there usually. It says that thou mightest observe to do. Someone say observe to do. Observe to do all that is written therein. For in doing it, you will make your way prosperous. And you will have a kind of success that the Bible calls good success. There is success, but there is good success. When the blessing of the Lord make it rich and prosperous and adds no sorrow, it is called good success. The kind of success where you are up today and down tomorrow is not good success. Obedience. Obedience to what? Obedience to the voice of God. Obedience to the instructions that connect to the blessings you desire. I told you that every dimension of God that we seek in this kingdom is conditional. And there are principles and instructions that are connected. Please listen. Please listen. You have to get this. Principles and instructions. Say after me, please. Principles and instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. An instruction. And he got up and walked on water. When they met him and said, Sir, the feast, the wedding in the Cana of Galilee, in John chapter 2, the wine is finished. And there's, there's, there's about to be a major embarrassment in this feast. And he said, fill six pots with water. And when he filled six pots with water, he said, now you go and serve the Lord. That's a risk. If those guys got there and the rulers took and... <laughs> If they fetched that water and it was water in their mouth, they would have killed those people. But at the instance of his word, they went. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. In our life. One more time, water. He's turning into wine. Just knowing that God can lift you in your place of work is not enough. Just knowing that an anointing can come upon your life and set you apart is not enough. There are instructions and there are principles. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience, he says, when your obedience is complete. Apostle, I desire higher levels of the anointing. There are principles that lead to it. You must obtain the grace to be obedient. Apostle, I want to increase financially in this season. Just claiming wealth will make you look foolish before the world, respectfully speaking. It's not enough to just say, my God wants to bless me. You must find out the principles that are connected to that dimension of God's grace. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The Bible says a diligent soul shall be made fat. Are we together now? It says the gift of a man shall make room for him and bring him before great men. These are the principles that connect to greatness. Apostle, I want the nations to hear my voice. There are many spiritual principles that are responsible for that. One of it is an encounter with the prophetic. Go and read your Bible. Nobody rose just because they had intellect. There were times in their lives where the prophetic had to be introduced into their life. By this time, tomorrow, he said. There are principles. The challenge is most times believers know the outcomes that they desire. 
but they do not know the principles that connect to those outcomes or they have not obtained the grace to be diligent and obedient in keeping to and with those instructions and with those principles i am passionate about knowing the instructions and the principles that connect me to the grace and the glory of god you may have heard me say it that every time the glory of god is revealed the glory of god revealed is an attestation to the fact that his patterns have been kept if you keep god's patterns you will see his glory we are here today celebrating the mighty hand of god upon your man of god and upon a prophet that god has given to the nations not only because he is called of god but he can articulate steps of faith in obedience to the voice of god i thank god for the privilege that i had to, to participate in the process of this place in our discussion and and i had the honor of watching prophecy unveil today we are celebrating what is the glory of god but it did not just come because he's a man of god it came at the instance of obedience shout obedience disobedience is very costly if you know the cost of disobedience you will run away from it obedience the lord can give you an instruction for instance and say it's time to go to the next level of your life spend three days in fasting and prayer that's an instruction you may argue it and say god um i've not eaten well i'm just about to eat well before the fast and you know you see god speaks once it's your responsibility to hear twice Isaac, I know there is famine and other people are running, but stay in this land. This is your place of blessing. You can argue it. When God speaks, obey him more. When God speaks, honor him. Every prophetic word does not make sense till it makes sense. Every prophetic word looks like a mistake. Every prophetic word looks like an error until you see the intelligence of God play out through the pride of men by this time tomorrow and a foolish man would come and say even if the windows of heaven is opened ah! and he said okay so that you will not die thinking god was a liar you will see it but you will not eat from it i rebuke unbelief from your life i rebuke the spirit of disobedience from your life hallelujah ask everyone who God has helped in ministry in business they will tell you a came a point came in their lives where they were divine instructions I'm not just talking of instructions written in scripture there are times God will give you unique instructions when those seasons come be careful because you will you will take advantage of something that will lift you to a new season or you will recycle your current season again Years ago, the Lord gave me an instruction. I've shared it a number of times. To take a seed and take it to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And I got up. It was, it was, I'm, I'm not talking about money. It's just an example. It came that there are, there are seeds when you give, you know this is Ishmael. But there are seeds when you give, you know this one is Isaac you will die with your seed there these are not the seeds that you smile there are seeds that are called precious the Bible says you weep while you are giving them and then I remember I came out and I was about to enter the vehicle to go and the Holy Spirit told me he said come out he said put your hand on that ground I placed my hand on that ground he said from today you have entered the overflow anointing lifting does not just happen i have to be honest with you because you see believers are wonderful people and even though prophecy is here to help us there is the responsibility of obedience adherence to divine instructions go around jericho seven times once every day and then at the seventh time the priests in front with a shout and that blast of the healer the wall will come down that was the instruction you can invent your own strategy but it may not work imagine them going around quietly what are you doing obeying instructions 
and for every time they obeyed the spirit of grace is released something is happening in the realm of the spirit while you are obeying just because you don't hear any sound does not mean god is not moving keep obeying god can give you an instruction and say for the remaining part of this year every day you must pray for the man of god and his wife it's an instruction oh lord but i'm already a prayer warrior that's not it an instruction now came from heaven god can give you an instruction and say every month from that which you have ensure that you sow into the man of god and his wife you say lord i've been doing it he says no you did that one as a gift from your heart this one is an instruction connected to the next level of your life believe what i'm telling you you are not being taught cunningly devised fables instructions and then principles principles obedience is powerful it is the game changer between people who become talkatives and those who become proof producers principles dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus.